I'm, I'm excited to be here. I want to thank, you know, those people watching online. Thank you for watching online. Thank you for tuning in. If you're in town or you live here, come join us. Be a part of what we're doing today. Okay, so uh, today I'm excited to be here and to speak with you today. I think God has a word for us. God has a word of truth. And, and uh, it's going to inspire us to continue visioneering our, our 2024. Amen. Today, what, what I want to do is... Uh, I, I, right off the bat, I want to tell you, you may hear some things that you wish somebody else heard. You may hear some things in this message, and you're like, oh, this message was for so-and-so. This message needed to hear that. And, and listen, what I want you to do is, if you ever get that thought, forward it to them, send it to them. That's why we have put it on YouTube tomorrow or whenever. It'll be on YouTube. We have it on Facebook and all that. But focus on what God wants to speak to you today. All right, so dismiss that thought and just say, I'll send it to whoever. But take notes. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you and, and, and see what, what he wants to tell you today. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, so uh, we are in this sermon series, you guys already know, called Vision for Victory, where we're learning to live uh, uh, with our God-given vision and to overcome any challenges that come against us, right? Last, last week, we, we talked about taking your shot, right? Or fa because every shot you don't take, is a, it fails, right? You, you can't make any shot you don't take, but you're bound to make one if, if you take a shot. But today, I, I want us to continue on that message series. But before that, I just want to remind you, we see it on the screen, and, and I started thinking, I don't mention it enough, but I want you to know that CDLF exists so that you can know God. We can help you know God. CDLF exists so you can find freedom. And, and you find freedom through small groups. And uh, CDLF exists so that you can discover your purpose and so that you can make a difference. Okay? So uh, today I want to talk to you about one of the most important aspects of our vision. Our, our personal vision as a church, but also I think it should be our vision as, as a people, as the people of God. One of the most essential elements for our victory. One of the most powerful weapons for our warfare. It is fellowship, and community. That's it. You, you probably received a text message and it already had the title. It's that simple, fellowship and community. And today, if you're taking notes, our scripture is in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through 25. I'm going to read that and then I'm going to pray. If you have it with me, if not, we're going to put it on the screen. You can follow all along. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as it is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day draw near. Can I get an amen? Are you guys ready for today's message? Uh, uh, turn to your neighbor and ask, are you ready? Right? Uh, uh, turn, turn to me and say, bring it on. Bring it. Let's go. Listen, I, I like it when you guys talk to me. I like it when you guys amen. I like it when you guys are like, mm-hmm, right? Uh, um, and, and so uh, maybe, maybe the person next to you doesn't like it if you ever do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Just amen and, and, and keep going, okay? So Paulo's already laughing. He, I don't know if he's giving elbows or receiving elbows, but uh, listen, let, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for putting air in our lungs today, for uh, this beautiful day and this time we get to fellowship and have a community together. Lord, the people that are here are supposed to be here, and the people that are not here will eventually hear it. Lord, but today we're here to receive, so open our hearts, open our minds to receive the word of God today. We want to we wanna not just worship you, but we want to learn and grow and be stretched in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, so what's the title of my message today? Fellowship and community, good. Not giving you anything but a shout out. Daisy, there you go. Awesome, way to go. All right, so these, uh, this, this Bible verse uh, is, is, tells us that we're not meant to walk on our journey alone. We are not meant to pursue our vision alone. We are not meant to fight our battles alone. We are not meant uh, to do life alone. We are meant to do life together. We are meant to build community that encourages, 
community that supports, community that stirs one another towards love and good works. We are meant to have family. We are meant to have a team. We are meant to have a tribe. We are meant to have a church. But what does it mean to have fellowship and community? What does it look like to be a part of a community that stirs one another in love and in good works? And how can we cultivate and maintain that part of community in our lives? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about today. We, I, I, want, I want to share three things. Uh, Melissa comes up always and plays the piano, and it just makes my ending sound holy, right? So I, I, you, you guys know I try to keep things as simple as possible. And so I already warned her I have three things to say. And that's all. It is, it is the, the essentials that I want to share from this Bible verse regarding fellowship and community. Three things that we need to have. Three things that we need to do and three things that we need to be to experience the power and the blessing of fellowship and community. I know you're ready, so if you're taking notes, I want you to write down number one. The first thing we need to have fellowship and community is love. It is love, love, love. Uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman uh, has a song that says, it's all about love, 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 love. I won't sing it to you because... Um, I know you're hungry and you want to you go. But if you ever get a chance to go listen to him, it's, it's, he's got a whole love album. It's amazing. Love is the foundation of fellowship and community. Love is the glue that holds us together. Love is the fuel that drives us. Love is the reason why we are here. Love is the motivation of our vision. Love is the goal of our victory. And in John chapter 1, verse 4, from 7 to 8, it says, Dear friends, Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. So what what, what that means is that, that love is not just a feeling. Love is not just an emotion. Love is not just a word. Love is a person. Love is a presence. Love is a power. Love is God, and God is love, and the love is in us because we have been born of God, because we know God, and because we have received God's love. So God is love. God is a person, and and, and so we have love in us, and because we have love in us, we can love one another, and we can love one another with the same love that God has given us, right? And God is so good, he, he forgives us of our sins, he forgives us of everything. So we can love one another in that love that is unconditional, in that love that is sacrificial, in that love that is transformational. We can love one another in that love that covers a multitude of sins, right? Uh, if, if you have kids, I don't know if you've, if you've ever had kids, but uh, um, sometimes your kid will get in trouble. They do something that they weren't supposed to do. Right. And, and and they'll they'll go and run to their favorite parent. Right. So in our case, they run to me. And I, I'm kidding. It's sometimes some of them run to their mom, but they'll run to, to their parent and they'll say, you know, they'll, they'll admit what they did. And but don't tell dad. But don't tell dad that I broke it or don't tell mom that that we did it. Right. One time I was in Mexico and I got in a car wreck. And so my mom was teaching me how to drive, and I'm sure my dad wasn't happy about that. So, you know, I was 13, and I got in a car wreck at 13, right? And I was like, Mom, don't tell Dad. And like a week later, my uncle calls my dad, hey, and says, hey, how's your son doing? Is he recovered from that car wreck? And I'm like, my uncle ruined it, right? But listen, a, a love covers a multitude of sins, a love that bears all things, a love that never fails. A, a, we, can, we can love one another with a love that is not selfish, a love that is not rude, a love that is not proud. We can love one another with a love that is patient, love that is kind, love that is humble. But love is not just something that we have. Love is something that we do. Love is not just a noun. Love is a verb. Love is not just a gift. Love is a choice. Love is not just a state. Love is an action, right? Love needs to have wheels, right? It, it, you should be able to tell that there is love, right? 
Uh, love is not just something that we feel. Love is something that we show. Uh, so, so this is where all the wives are like, mm-hmm, Valentine's is around the corner. All, all the, the girlfriends are like, mm-hmm. Love is something that we show. Love is something that we say. Love is something that we prove. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. So how do we demonstrate this love? We have to manifest our love. We have to express our love. We have to uh, love not only in words, but in deeds. I can't just tell my wife I love her. I got to show my wife that I love her. And the same thing for my kids. We have to love not only in talk, but also in walk. We have to love not only in theory, but in practice. In theory, we love our neighbor. Oh, God is love. God t- tells us to love our neighbor, love the people around you. Love it. And in theory, we're all amazing Christians in theory. But in practice, some of us are slacking. We need to love not in theory, but love in practice. Is that a little quiet? I did tell you guys to amen, right? And like, be, yeah, you guys are with me? So turn to your neighbor and say, love in practice. Love in practice. We have to love not just in spirit, but in truth. So how do we love in action and in truth? How do we show love to one another? And how do we prove our love to one another? Well, the Bible gives us an example in Romans chapter 12, verse 10, all right? And it says, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourself. So that means that we need to be loyal to one another. Turn to your neighbor and say, loyal. Turn to your neighbor and say, we need to be faithful. We need to be faithful to one another. We need to be committed to one another. We need to stick up for one another. We need to stand for one another. We need to support one another. We need to honor one another. We need to respect and value one another. We need to put the other first than us. We need to serve one another and we need to prefer one another. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 6 verse 2, carry one another's burdens and this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So, How do we put love into action? It means we need to help one another. That's how you do it. We need to help one another. We have to comfort one another. We have to strengthen one another. We have to share their pains. You don't just have to be there when they got a raise and now we're going to go eat and he's paying for everything. No, no. We got to be there in the painful times. We got to be there when, 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 when you're hurting. We got to bear one another's struggles. We got to lift one another's load. We have to be there for one another, care for one another, and pray for one another. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, it says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ has forgiven you. That means that we need to be gentle we want with one another. We need to be merciful with one another. We need to be gracious to one another. We need to be forgiving. We need to heal one another. We need to restore one another. We need to let go of the past. We need to embrace the present, and we need to hope for the future. Amen. Amen. There are, uh, the, there are some ways that we can love one another in action and in truth. There are some of the, these are some of the ways that we can stir up one another's love and good works. Again, love and action should be the good works, the good works of love. The good works of love. Uh, 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 these are some of the ways that we can build community based on love, that we can fill our hearts with love and be known by love. CD, I love church. I, I have a question for you, though. I have a question. Do you love one another? Do you love your brother and sister in Christ? Do you love your family? Do you love your friends? Do you love your church? Do you love one another? Do you demonstrate the love to one another? Do you prove your love to one another? Is there good works in your love? If you do, I want to congratulate you. If I was down there, I'd high-five you. 
I, I, I want to encourage you to keep doing that. But if you don't, I want to challenge you. And with the word of God, I want to correct you. Because it is the first thing that we need to have. To, to have fellowship and community. We need to have love. Love is the foundation of fellowship and community. And love is, is the foundation of our core values here at CDLF. The second thing I want to tell you if you're taking notes. The second thing we need to, to do for fellowship and community is to meet. And I don't mean M-E-A-T. Not, not sirloin or... You know, T-bone steak, not that kind of meat, right? It's M-E-E-T. We need to meet together. Meat is an expression of fellowship and, commu in, and community. Meat is the way we connect with one another. Meat is the way we grow with one another. Meat is the way we learn from one another. Meat is the way we worship with one another, the way we serve one another. Meat is the way we do life with one another. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, Do not neglect to meet together as it is a habit of some. Sometimes you, you get in the habit of not meeting together. But after COVID, people started getting in the habit of not coming to church that often, and then maybe not hanging out with their friends that often. And, and sometimes it's okay because you're going through a season, you have a lot of work, you're working overtime, you're working weekends, things like that happen. But then it becomes, like the Bible says, becomes a habit to some. Then there is no work, there is no overtime, and you're just in the habit of not coming to church, you're just in the habit of not meeting. But I uh, It says, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, Do not neglect the, the meeting together It is a, as, it, as a habit of some, but encourage one another, and all the more as you see the days draw near. Now, we've already talked about this. I believe the days are drawing near. Their days are drawing closer and closer. And so as we see them draw near, we got to be careful. And last night I was at a at a um, at an event at, at a 40th birthday of one of my cousins, and so I was I was standing there having a conversation with our fellow officer uh, uh, and detective Aaron Badillo, who's on the drums, and and so we we were uh, having this conversation, and he was filling me in on some things that they are filled in with, like reports from the FBI and things like that, where they're just like, hey, we're getting ready because we think. 2024 is going to be a, a chaotic year. He's telling me that there's people that are, that are in the force, that are in the reserve, that already got pulled and got sent to the border. And there's hundreds and thousands of people, and that's going out of control. But also here in the cities, because there's some things that are crossing. And, you know, he's telling me all these things, and I'm just sitting there like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm like, well, what are they doing about it? Like, you're telling me problems. What are the solutions, right? And, and he says, we, we don't know. They're just telling us that get ready. Get ready. And I'm in, in my soul, I'm like, the days are getting near. We need people to know the word of God. We need people to, to feel the love of God through us. That is love in good works, love in action. Amen. So what does it mean to have to, to have to make it a priority to meet together? What does it mean to make it a priority to meet together? It means that we have to make it a habit. It means that we have to uh, make it joyful to meet together, right? If, if you're hanging out with me and it's always a drag and, it's, and you're just a Debbie Downer all the time, if you're just all the time, it's annoying, you get annoyed, everybody's nerve, no, you're not going to get invited back, right? And so you have to make it joyful too. But you, you have to meet regularly, you have to meet consistently, and you have to meet intentionally, Right? When, when I heard this, I'm like, there's a word from God. I need to tell my wife I need to be intentional about a Super Bowl party because I need to meet together with my friends, right? If you want to sign up to bring chips or anyway. Um, so we need to be intentional. We need to meet together. We need to meet online. We need to meet wherever, and we need to meet whenever we can. We need to meet together not only on Sundays, but also on weekdays. We need to meet together not just in large groups, but also in small groups. We need to meet together in worship services, but also in Bible studies. 
We need to meet together in prayer meetings, in outreach events, in fellowship activities, and many other different ways that we can meet together. Why do we have to meet together? Why is it so important to meet together? Why can't we just stay home? Why can't we just watch online? Why can't we just do our own thing? Well, the Bible tells us some of the reasons in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and with many wonders and signs performed by the apostles, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to one another who needed them. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with gladness and sincere hearts, praising God, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. This passage describes the early church, the first community of believers, and they modeled the fellowship in the community. The first believers, the first church, modeled the fellowship and community. And it tells us that when we meet together, or that when they met together, they experienced some amazing times. And they experienced some amazing things. They experienced the teaching of the word of God and the fellowshipping in the spirit of God and breaking bread together. I started thinking, I'm like, I wonder which of the disciples was really good in the grill. I wonder which of the disciples knew how to really prepare, you know, prepare that, that, that fire, right? I wonder which one in their group just knew how to make amazing hummus. Or something. I don't know what, what they ate back then. And I might be speaking because I'm really hungry right now. Right? But those are the thoughts that come to me. I'm like, it was at first church, and they were meeting, and they're like, hey, I'm going to make the dip, and I'm going to make this amazing hummus, and I'm going to make this. And if you guys watch um, um, uh, The Chosen, right, uh, they were, uh, the, in the, the last season, they, they had some olive trees, and they were making, like, some amazing sauces and stuff. That's why those things come into my head. I'm like, oh, yeah, that could have been it, right? I'm like, make me a nice olive, olive sauce, right? And then do you have any Parmesan cheese and then some of that bread from, like, uh, Olive Garden? No, anyway, that's, that's. They experienced the teachings of God. They experienced the all power, the generosity of God's provision, the joy in God's presence. They experienced uh, the praising of God's name and the favor of God's grace and the growing of God's kingdom. Amen. They experienced the vision of God, the victory of God, and the glory of God. And we can experience those same things when we meet together i'm telling you when we meet together and 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 we're playing basketball we're having fun when we meet together and we're eating uh, uh burgers it's a joyful time when we meet together and maybe we're having coffee afterwards and and we ha we're having a concha pan dulce there at, at the end and maybe sometimes the conversation starts to, to to turn a little bit and then before you know we're we're in ministry and we're praying for somebody. We're sharing, maybe we're, we're sharing our victories and testimonies. And, and we're like, oh, I'm so proud of you. That's great. I can't believe God's doing those amazing things. Or maybe you just started to share, hey, I need prayer. I need this. This is what I'm going through. And we experience those amazing things together. And, and so if, if we meet together, we can see God's vision. And we can come and we can overcome any challenge and we can achieve Victory. Amen? Guys, so, so with this point, I want to ask you another question. It's question time, right? Because I, I, you need to answer. The first question was, do we love one another? The second question is, is do you meet together? Do you meet with your brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you meet with your family? Do you meet with your friends? Do you, do you meet with your church? Do you make meeting a priority. Do you, do you make meeting a habit? Do you make those meetings a joy? Do, do you meet together? Right? And uh, here, here at our church, we, we, are, so, uh, uh, we are so connected with, with fellowship and community that it's part of what we do. It's part of our vision. And when, when we say find freedom, we believe that you find freedom 
through fellowship with other people. Because how else is somebody going to be able to correct you in love? How else is somebody else going to be able to encourage you and stir up and stir up uh, uh, and, and stir up uh, love in you and and lift you up? How else can we do that if we're not spending time together? And this this is time together, but this is not the time together that we need, right? This is very one way, very one way from from the altar down, and then we get a few minutes to say hello there at the end. The meeting together happens if we go out to eat together. The meeting happens in those small groups. The meeting happens where there's a two-way conversation. We had our small group. We had our small group, uh, uh, the couple small group, the first semester last year. And, and um, we were sharing with another couple, and I said, you know, I never would have known anything about your, how you grew up and, and, and your father and that relationship if we hadn't gone out to eat that one time. And we, it was, we, we met here, and then afterwards we all went to go eat at a restaurant, and then we started sharing, and they started sharing their story. And I'm like, I've known you for a couple years, and I n- never knew that. But it wasn't until we had that opportunity to know, and then it made sense. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. Now, now it makes sense. Now, 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 now things are, are starting, and we're starting to put things together. And now I know where we can encourage you. And now I know uh, why, you know, sometimes you, you feel like this or you feel like that. And we just kind of had a, had a beautiful moment. But I would have never known. I hadn't known that in, in years. Right? If, if you make it a priority, if you make meeting a priority, if you do meet with your brothers and sisters, if you are part of a small group, I encourage you, and, and I high-five you right now. That's great. But if you don't, I want to challenge you, and in the, with, with God's word by my side, I want to correct you because we should be meeting together, not just here. This should be a priority, but not just here. Amen? That's, that, because that second thing is what we, it's, it's also what we need. In order to have fellowship and community, we need to meet together. The meeting is an expression of fellowship and community. Amen? Amen. So even, even when, when I correct my children when they're wrong. And when I'm correcting them, I'm correcting them because I love them. And I don't want them to, to be ridiculed when they go somewhere and they're, you know, they don't know what fork to use. Or they don't know how to cut their meat because they're trying to cut it with a, with a fork. And I'm like, you use a knife and this is how you do it. You put the fork here and you put the knife there. And, and I, I, I'm encouraging them to do it right. And so when we meet together, even when, even when you have those moments of correction, like right now when I, when I tell you I want to correct you, I do it because I love you. And I do it because it's, it's what's best for you. It's, it's what's best for you is, is to meet together. Amen? Number three, and then Melissa's going to make, make her way up here so, you know, we can end like in a holy forever. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm not even on the right key. All right, number three. The third thing that we need in order to, to have that fellowship and community is to be encouraging. Encouraging. Encouraging is, is the outcome of fellowship and community. Encouraging is a result of us meeting together. I get encouraged when I meet with my friends. I get encouraged when I meet with other couples. I get encouraged when we get to talk, when we get to break bread, when I get to hear their testimonies, or I get to pray for them, or I get to even, even bless them. Amen? Because it's, it's better to give than to receive. So there's something about even giving. Hey, I know you were, you were sick. We came and we brought you a, a plant. Oh, really? And then we even feel better about bringing a plant. Right? But it, it's, it's encouraging is the benefit of loving one another. If, if you love one another, it just comes naturally. Hey, I'm so glad. Man, look at, look at you in that BMW. That's amazing. Look at you in that Tesla. Take me for a ride. Does it drive by itself? Like, you get excited. You Encouragement and encouraging things happen as a result of the benefit of loving one another. Encouragement is the purpose of stirring one another up in love and good works. The, the stirring up part in our key Bible verse today, the stirring up part is the encouragement. That, that's, that's how we do it. Encouragement is the purpose of stirring up one another. Encouragement is the way that we build one another up, not tear down uh, one another. Encouragement is the way we speak life, not death, 
to one another. Encouragement is the way we help one another to fulfill God's vision and God's victory in our lives. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, again, not neglecting to meet one another as a habit, as, a, as some have the habit of, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the, dra- the days draw near. That means that we have to be the source of encouragement. We are the source of encouragement. Pablo, you are the source of encouragement. Priscilla, you are the source of encouragement. Right? It it, it comes from within you. You have to be the voice of encouragement. You have to be the force of encouragement. You have to be in you have to be encouraging to one another in words. And we have to encourage one another with our actions. Right? I, I can just be there like, hey, you got it. Pick up that sofa. Go. You can do it. Come on. Go. One step. Two step. Let's go. You got it. That's encouraging with my words, but it's better to say, if I, hey, we got this. We can do it. Lift with your legs. You get that side. I got this side. Come on. Let's go. We got it. Let's go. Oh, my goodness. Let's put it down. Woo. We got it. We're, it's going to take us a while, but we can do it. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. We encourage not just with our words, but also with our actions. We have to encourage one another with our lives. We have to encourage one another with God's word of truth. We have to encourage one another with the hope of God's promises. We have to encourage one another with the love of God's heart. Why? Why do we have to encourage one another? Why is it so important to encourage one another? Why do we have to uh, focus? Why do we why can't we just focus on ourselves? Why can't we just do our own thing? Proverbs 18:21. I'm glad you asked why, Linda. Glad you asked why. It it in Proverbs 18:21 it says, "The tongue has the power of life and death, but those who love it will eat its fruit. Because you have the power of life and death in your tongue. So be wise. That means that our words have the power to affect our lives and the lives of others. Our words have the power to build or to destroy, to heal or to hurt, to bless or to curse. Our words have the power to create or to cancel, to affirm or to deny, to declare or to doubt. Our words have influence over our thoughts. Our words have influence over our feelings. Our words have influence over our actions and our outcomes. Our words have the power to shape our reality, our destiny, and our eternity. A couple nights ago, my kids thought we were gathering at home and we were having family movie night. And so I got them all in the living room. And I'm like, hey, now that I have your attention, let me put it on the phone. And, you know, we had kind of had a conversation. Uh, uh, you know, it was a, I can't, a spiritual conversation for a minute. And, and, uh, and I'm like, yeah. So we're all sitting in the, in the sofa. And then I put on a sermon. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, we can watch the movie after this. So they're like, how long is this sermon going to be? I'm like, 41 minutes. They said, an hour? I'm like, 41, 41 minutes. We sat there and we watched it. But the, the, the guy that was preaching, he told a story. And, and he's telling a story, and he, uh, John Bevere, and he, he's saying how there, there was a guy that had, had wronged him and had offended him. And, and he had a reason to, to hate him, but, but in his heart he knew that he, he shouldn't. So he said, I started praying for him because God put that in my heart. Pray for him. And, and the reality is that the first couple of weeks, I was praying for him. And I'm like, oh, you know, bless him, whatever. You know, protect his family if you must. If he shall live, let him be joyful. And he said, I just, I, I prayed, but I, I, I didn't mean it. He said, but after about the, the second week, Something started to change, and, and I started to, to mean it. And I started to say, Lord, bless him. Make him, uh, uh, give him abundance. May his, may his money go far and multiply. Lord, bless his family. Give him health. He's like, I started praying for him everything I was praying for me. So if I wanted my marriage to be a blessing, I prayed for his marriage to be a blessing. I prayed for his kids to be a blessing. Why? Because there's power in your words. Encouragement happens 
through our words. Amen. And we can use our words to encourage one another or to discourage one another. We can use our words to speak life or speak death. We can use our words to stir up one another and to love one another in good works. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. That means that we have the responsibility to encourage one another. We have the duty to encourage one another. We have the privilege to encourage one another. We have to encourage one another because we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are members of the same body and we partake of the same grace. We have to encourage one another because we are living in a fallen world. We have to, uh, uh, we are facing many trials and we are fighting many enemies and we have to encourage one another because we are waiting on the Lord's return and the day is drawing near. Amen. We can encourage one another in many ways. We, we can encourage one another by words of affirmation and words of appreciation and words of admiration, right? Did I say that? No, ad admiration. We can encourage one another with giving compliments and, and giving thanks and giving honor. We can encourage one another by giving testimonies and sharing scriptures and, and sharing prayer. We can encourage one another by giving advice, by giving hugs and giving smiles. We can encourage one another by being present and being attentive and being supportive. So to end question time, guys, do you encourage others? Do we encourage one another? Do you encourage one another? Do you encourage your brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you encourage your family? Do you encourage your friends? Do you encourage your church? And maybe in this, these questions, you're starting to think, I know some people that don't encourage. I know some people that don't love. I know some people that don't want to gather and meet. You know, it's funny because my wife and I are talking about how, you know, we, we have the privilege to be able to go and encourage some, some families and some uh, couples that sometimes are going through some things. And we have the, the honor and privilege to be able to sit with them and, and talk to them and pray with them and, and listen to them and, and be able to encourage them. And, and, and sometimes uh, we don't get time to sit uh, with, with people to encourage them and, and to spend time with them. We notice that the people that are open for the conversation, the people that go to the marriage counseling or the marriage classes and the, the camps that we've had and the talks that we've had, are usually the ones that have the stick to the ones that stay together and the ones that are blessed even through trials and tribulations. And we notice that the ones that think they know everything, the ones that are, don't meet together, the ones that don't open up, the ones that don't come when we have the, the, the camps and the ones that don't come when we have the couples talk because they knew it all and they didn't need it, are the ones that end up breaking apart. Do you encourage one another? Are you open for encouragement? Are you meeting together so that you can be encouraged? Or so that you can encourage others? If you do, man, congratulations. Another high five for you. Three high fives. But if you don't, I want to challenge you. And through the word of God, I want to correct you. And I want to tell you it's important. That's why it's part of our vision. And that's why we tell you that you can't experience what CDLF is all about until you're in a small group. This is just part of it. This is just a Sunday part. The people part, that's where you find freedoms. That's where you find freedom. In the people part. And yes, in the people part, you're going you're gonna to see that there's a struggle. Why? Because people get to see that side of you that sometimes you don't see. And then you start in love being corrected. Or sometimes in, in those areas, you're able to encourage others, which is great. That's why we, we need to be there. And we make small groups where you're not just being preached to, but it's a conversation with the whole group. So I want to challenge you and correct you because this is a third and final point of our fellowship and community. We need to encourage one another. We need to, encourage, we need to have encouragement 
as an outcome of fellowship and community. So these are the three things that I had for you that, that are for fellowship and community. We need to have love. We need to have meat, not M-E-A-T, but M-E-E-T. Some of you are going to be like, we're going to Texas Roadhouse because the pastor said we had to have meat. Right? You're not doing it right if you're just by yourself. Take somebody with you, okay? Listen, it, it, and, and we need to be encouraging. And if you do these three things, if you practice these things, you will, le- and if you, leave these, if you live these things, you will experience the power and the blessing and the fe- and the, that is in the fellowship community. You will experience the joy and the peace that comes with fellowship and community. You will experience the vision and the victory that comes with fellowship and community. So, CDLF, I want you to stand to your feet. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your participation. I want to bless you, and I want to encourage you, and I want to love you, and I want to meet with you, and I want to encourage you, and I want to build community with you, and I want you to want it too. Listen, if, if, if there's not a small group that, that you fit in, start one. Start one. We're getting ready next month to, to launch our small groups, and if you want to be a part of it, it Sign up for one. When, when we have the tables out here, be sure you sign up for one. And, and if not, then sign up to be a leader. Sign up to lead a small group. Hey, I want to lead a small group that plays golf. I want to lead a small group that we just have breakfast every Saturday. I want to be a small group that acts. You fill in the blank. That is, it's just guys. It's just girls. It's just teens. It's just whatever. Right? I want to, I want to have a small group that plays Fortnite. I don't know. You know. But, but do it. Have those moments of meaning together. And listen, if, if, if you've been here a while and you haven't made that many friends, then be bold and courageous and say, hey, those, those people look like they're good people. Let's invite them to, to dinner. Or let's see what they're doing for lunch. Or th- those young people seem like they're, they're kind of cool. Maybe I'll, I'll click. Maybe come to the youth service. Or maybe in, invite them to go have a, a Starbucks. Or invite whatever young people do, right? Invite them to go, you know, do whatever, right? Go play FIFA, church and salads. I invite them to, to hang out, but do something. And be, before I want to close, I, I just want to give you the opportunity to, to have a personal relationship with Christ. And I, I know we're, we're a small group, and many of you have already given your life to Christ. But if there's somebody here, I don't want you to leave without, without giving your life to Christ. I want to encourage you to start there. Give your life to Christ and do it today. Do it now. So if you can close your eyes and bow your heads, if that's you today and you want to give your life to Christ, it, I want you to know that God gave the most important thing for you. He gave his only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And if you want to have that eternal life, can you just raise your hand right where you are? We want to pray with you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. If there's anybody online, we want to pray with you too. So now with our eyes closed, let's just pray with the four people that lifted their hand and let's pray loudly together and say, Dear Heavenly Father, I give you my life. I accept your son Jesus as my Lord and Savior. From this day on, I want to make a difference. I know that you will clean me of my sins and of my guilt. And you have a purpose and a plan for me. I will follow it. I will gather with other Christians. I will be encouraging. And I will love like you love. I accept your son Jesus as my Lord and Savior. In his name, amen. Amen. Can we give him a clap offering? (laughs) Guys, so now now I want to pray for you, and and I want to pray to to dismiss too, but I just have a few announcements. So one, you can give in the back. Um, Officer Vadillo is giving back there. You can ask him all about what he was telling me. But uh, so you can give back there. You have a, we have a QR code where you can give on, online on our website. You can give through Zelle. You can give, you know, in an envelope cash if you want to. We, we thank you. You are a blessing to us. You are a blessing to this church. And we're able to continue to, to do ministry and do amazing things like fix the, the, the rail that's broken in that first gate and other things that we need to work on. So thank you for that. 
Uh, but, but also, I want to tell you, small groups are, are around the corner. Be thinking about meeting with a small group or starting a small group. Be thinking about being, making it a year of intentionality where you're with other couples or you're with other friends or you're gathering. I don't know. Throw a Super Bowl party. Invite me. I'll bring chips right? and hummus. I don't know. What, whatever you want to do. Uh, so just, you know, make a plan on how, we, yeah, how you can love in good works, how you can encourage and how you can continue to meet. Amen? I want to pray for you in that, and I want to encourage you. Wednesdays we have service. Uh, the youth is getting ready to, to, to start their services and all their activities that they're going to do. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a great year. So if you're young, come and make it to all that stuff. It's going to be amazing, okay? Now let me just pray for you. If you have a prayer request, we have a flyer. Sorry, we have a flyer. Um, if you want to go out for thanks for Thanksgiving, <laughs> for Valentine's, if you want to, I'm like, what, what is that holiday? Again? If you want to go out for Valentine for Valentine's and you don't have anybody to babysit your kids, our young adults are going to be babysitting, and because and because they, and high school students too, they're going to be babysitting that day because don't worry, there's going to be some adult supervision here too. But they're going to be babysitting so that you can go out and have a fabulous dinner. So make reservations for that Friday, and then make reservations to, to drop off your kid. If you have one kid, it's fifteen dollars. If you have two kids, it's twenty. If you have more than two kids, it's just ten dollars per kid. So thirty would be for three kids, or four would be forty, right? Okay, so listen, just make plans to maybe go out that day, make reservations, and then also maybe drop off your kids here, okay? So you're sowing for the kingdom, and you're sowing for the youth, and, uh, and also you're sowing for yourself because you get to take your wife out and make some points there and, and, and have that meet with meet time with, with your wife, right? So meet, M-E-A-T and M-E-E-T, all, both, both at the same time. All right, thank you very much. Uh, now let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, there's some hands that, that are lifted high because they have petition requests and they, they have prayer requests, Lord, and, and, and we, we pray for them and we, 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 we bless them and we ask that your favor be upon them. Lord, open doors, whether it be financially, whether it be health, whether it be, you know, with relationships, you know our prayer requests, Lord, and we just pray that you move in a mighty way. And Lord, as, as we are dismissed today, we pray that you allow us to love like you love. To, to have love on wheels because love has, has actions and good works and not love in theory but love in practice not love here at church but love outside the church doors love not just with our immediate family but with those around us love at school love wherever we are Lord at work let us be encouraging to one another. The, the fruit of love is, is through the words of affirmations and words of encouragement and, 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 and words that honor and respect, Lord. And, and also let us meet together. Let us make it a priority to break bread together and to have small groups together and to, and to have time together, Lord, with other couples, with other young people at church, outside of church, wherever it may be. Let it, let it be a priority so that we can have victory this year because we are not meant to walk alone but to walk in community and fellowship lord i thank you for this church and for what you're doing we bless the offerings we bless the tithes we ask you to multiply them we ask you to 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 guard over our finances guard over our, our work and our jobs lord in jesus name we pray amen and amen god bless you guys i love y'all uh have a fabulous lunch and can't wait to see you uh, next sunday